What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Seth the Line Surgeon. And uh, you already know what time it is. Tipsy talk. All right, people. Today, I'm going to talk about how to cut corners in your business. <laughs> I know you're like, Oh my gosh, Seth has cut corners in his business? Yes, your boy cuts corners. I cut corners all the time. Because I got to make it easier for myself. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit more. But uh, first we got to talk about where I'm at. As you can see, I am inside. I got my wall of hats. Got my uh, Norfolk State uh, clock. Behold the green and gold. Got my Norfolk State flag over here. Um, got some hats. The hats, wall of hats. I want to add more. But uh, I know people always ask me, Seth, why do you do your tipsy talks in your shed? <laughs> and the long story short is that if you've been following me for a while, you know that I started my channel in 2013. <clears throat> and um, my daughter was born in 2014 so uh, I basically I didn't want to wake her up because if I woke her up it was going to be problems <laughs> not only for my wife but for me so to alleviate all of that uh, I just said I'll do my my tipsy talks in my shed so it was it worked out for me and I ended up enjoying it you know I like being out there uh, but now my daughter's at an age where, you know, she sleeps a little deeper, so I could be inside. And um, also, we setting up a little office in this room, so now I got an office, you know. My wife got her little office area, I got my office area, you know. It, this is my little tipsy corner. <laughs> I'm going to talk about five areas. Five areas that I cut corners in. <laughs> uh, let me get right into it. Because I know y'all like, uh, Seth, you know, I know what y'all thinking. Y'all like, Seth, it's not good to cut corners. You're supposed to be 100% with your business. And that's true. When I do my work for my customers, I do not cut any corners. I give them grade A work. But when it comes to my equipment, huh, you gotta cut corners, bro. You gotta save some money where you can save money because uh, that's where you make your money. If you're, if you're spending a whole bunch of money on equipment and you're not making as much money doing the job, then you know, you're not gonna make as much profit. First area I'm talking about is spreaders. I don't know how much, of, how many of you guys use spreaders, but uh, I'm gonna give you a little history of my spreaders. Uh, <clears throat> when I first started, I bought you know the Lowe's special, which was basically plastic wheels, 40 pound. Uh, spreader. I paid thirty dollars for my first one. It lasted me for like a year <laughs> or two. No, no. I take that back. I, I had it before I started my business. So residentially, it probably lasted me for three years or so. But then once I started working commercially, it, it wore out. And so I went back and bought another little special for forty dollars. The price had went up at this point, and so still had the same plastic wheels and whatnot. So I've had that for like a year or so and then I was at Tractor Supply. I don't know how many of you guys have Tractor Supply, but I was at Tractor Supply and all their spreaders have rubber tires, which is what commercial spreaders have. 
but it doesn't have the commercial spread of price. Lawn care hack. <laughs> so uh, I bought, and then, and then, matter of fact, it was the same price that I paid for the Lowe's special. I paid forty dollars for the Lowe's special with plastic wheels, and then I went and got a forty-pound one from Tractor Supply with rubber inflatable tires for forty dollars. Same price, you know. And so I love that thing because the thing about having rubber tires is that uh, when you hit like a bump or a pine cone with plastic tire spreader, you're like, oh, you almost flip over. It hits you in the stomach. You almost do a front flip. When you have a spreader with rubber tires, it just rolls right over it. So you're faster. You're more efficient. It just works overall better. And so I started with that 40 pound one and they had three levels. They had a 40 pound, they have a 70 pound, and then they had a 125 pound. I wanted to jump all the way up to the 125 pound, but I, I went ahead and bought a 70 pound, which I love. And I also have a, a toe behind spreader. But I'm particularly talking about just the uh, push behind spreader. And the reason why I said this is a good area to cut corners, a lot of people will go out and they'll buy the Lesco's and, and, and the um, bigger brand ones for like two, three hundred dollars, and they're like, "Oh, you know, this one will last me forever." And they prob they probably will. They probably will last you for a long time. But the thing about it is, how often are you gonna use it? That's the question you have to ask yourself before you go out here and buy something that you're not really going to use all the time. If, if, you, if you're if you not going to be spreading a whole lot in your business, uh, why pay $300 <laughs> for a spreader? You get what I'm saying? And, you know, but if, if you plan to sp do a lot of spreading, maybe you should buy, you know, that, you know, a bigger commercial product but for me you know at the time I wasn't spreading a lot you know I used it here and there and then I eventually upgraded to a toe behind one with which is Agrifab which that's a better brand uh, I think the tractor supply brand is like ground master or something like that some you know retail brand or whatever but long story short if you want a good price for a good spreader, go to Tractor Supply if you have it in your area and um, get the Groundmaster 70 pound. You pay like 80 bucks. You'll love it. <laughs> love it. Um, you can even order online if you don't have a Tractor Supply in your area. Alright, let me mark that off. See, now that I have an office, I can make lists and everything, man. My tipsy toss are going to be awesome. So I can mark that off. Check. <laughs> Next area we're going to talk about is trimmers. This is a very sensitive subject because people, you know, oh, I'm Team Steel. I'm Team Echo. I'm Team Husqvarna. You know, and, and, and I'm not really going to talk about the brand as much as I'm going to talk about the size motor. And what I want to ask you guys is, What do you, what size what size motor do you look for and why? And I was probably the same as you guys. Um, the first commercial I bought, the first commercial trimmer I bought was my Shindawa, uh, <laughs> my Shindawa three T three forty four, which is like the biggest, baddest Shindawa you can get. And so I was going for power. And <laughs> once I got it, I realized that that bad boy was heavy. <laughs> it was heavy, but it had some power. It, it could cut through pretty much anything, and I loved it. I need to get a new carburetor for it, I think, to get it back up and running. But, um, yeah, that bad boy was nice. And then my next commercial trimmer I bought was coincidentally way down on the other side of the spectrum 
Ooh, excuse me, which was the um, Echo PAS 225, which is Echo's lowest um, CC trimmer. The uh, 344 is 34 and a half CCs, and the Echo PAS 225 is 21 and a half CCs. And I know you might, and if there's somebody asks me, I will recommend the PAS 225 a million times. And somebody might ask Seth, well, why would you recommend such a weak trimmer? And when I went to buy it, the guy pointed something out to me. Number one, the PAS system is a multi-tool. So basically you have your trimmer part. And then you have your motor part and you attach them together. So if you want a hedge or something, you take off the trimmer, you put on your hedge or attachment, use the same motor. And the thing he pointed out to me is that the motor side is $180. The trimmer side is $80. So you're looking at about $300 some dollars for the whole set. But the thing about it is, say you have a big fleet. And all you have is a PAS system, and one of your motors go down. You could run in the in the dealer in your area, even um, Home Depot. Home Depot sells Echo. You could run in the dealer, buy a new motor set assembly, hook it up to your trimmer, and get back to work. And then worry about getting your your motor fixed on your your bad motor later and so I'm like bro like that makes a lot of sense <laughs> and so that's why I have two PAS systems because guess what H have I been in a situation where one of my trimmers stopped working yep and guess what I did I put that trimmer up grab my other trimmer put whatever attachment I needed on it and kept on going you hear what I'm saying it, it just baffles me sometimes when I see a people with like, like, you know, one hedger, one trimmer, one this, one that. It's like a whole bunch of different trimmers and, and, and tools for different things. I'm like, you can just get the a multi-tool system. Like I said, I don't I don't push people on any particular brand. If you want to do uh, Echo, if you want to do Steel, if you want to do Shindao or whatever. But the PAS system is the best. And, and what I recommend is the cheapest one. And the reason that is, is because a majority of your time, you are trimming. It doesn't take that much power to, to cut grass. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 trimming grass, you know what I mean? Yes, sometimes you get some thick grass every once in a while, woo woo woo. But majority of the time you're trimming grass. So if if you you can get the weaker trimmer, you don't have to get the biggest baddest trimmer. That's number two. Right, let me scratch that off the list. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I was gonna do blower, but uh, I might come back to that. But I, I, I feel like I need to do chainsaw. The reason why I won't do chainsaw is because um, I have a home light, whatever the, the smallest, cheapest home light is. <laughs> I got it from Home Depot. And a lot of people ask me, why do you have that home light chainsaw? And the reason is because <clears throat> I don't do a lot of chainsaw. <laughs> I uh, I have a, a most of the time when I pull my chainsaw out, I'm cutting down a bush. Somebody say, hey, can you cut down these couple of bushes in the front of my yard? Pull my chainsaw out for 10 minutes, zip, 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 cut down the three bushes or whatever, and I throw them in my trailer and, I, and I'm out, <laughs> you know. I don't really cut down trees. If somebody say, hey, do you cut down trees? I say, no. I said, the, the biggest trees I cut down is the size of a house. So, for you, you have to determine 
how big of a job are you going to do? Are you going to be cutting down big giant trees? Or are you going to be cutting down small trees and bushes? If you're going to be cutting down small trees and bushes, there's no need for you to get a big giant chainsaw. Now, if I was going to get a big giant chainsaw, I would get a Husqvarna because I like uh, my Husqvarna 150BT backpack blower. So, um, you know, I probably would look into that. But for now, my home life doesn't just fine. It starts up, it cuts what I need to cut. When it gets dull, I put a new chain, I sharpen the chain on it. I'm good to go so um, you don't really need to get the biggest baddest uh, blower I mean chainsaw out there kind of applies with blowers as well um, I'll do blow right quick I don't want to make this video too long it's probably gonna be long <laughs> blower I have the Husqvarna 150 BT right The Husqvarna 150BT is an awesome intermediate blower. Like I said, I care. I don't like to speak on other brands. I know people have Steels and Red Max or whatever. The Husqvarna 150BT is more powerful than a handheld blower, but it's not as powerful as the top end blowers you might see out there. And so it is a very good intermediate it's a very good starter blower which that's why i got it when i started because it's more powerful than the handheld when i got it i had a handheld pole in so i wanted something a little bit more powerful but i didn't want to pay that top dollar price so i got that and it was awesome for me it's strong and you know of course it's powerful enough to blow grass off of sidewalks but it might not be as powerful as a big blower but I still can do leaf jobs with it no problem so you don't need the big fancy stuff so you could cut corners there check that off the list <laughs> string I'll keep this quick and simple a lot of people be like oh this this trimmer string is the best that trimmer string is the best bruh like it's trimmer string <laughs> Um, I really haven't seen any difference in tremor string. The only thing I don't like about tremor string, when I first got my Shindawa, uh, it was blue. And I hated it because it was basically, it blended into the grass. I need to see my string, even as it's turning. Uh, so I like the yellow string. I like, um, the orange string which the yellow string is ugly line I've used that I've used the gray string some gray string that I really love um, I forget the name brand of it I got it from um, uh, uh, my friend Brett from 365 yard works um, this string has been good you know like I said, but I prefer to see it. But the this, this string is tough. I'll show you the brand of it on another video. But um, whatever string you want to use is good as long as you can see it. <laughs> In my opinion. Um, I'm going to get into this. Push mowers. Got to have a push mower, people. Got to have a push mower. Uh, it's a semi backup mower in case your your main mower goes down but also um, you know you don't really want sometimes you, you have a steep hill or a steep ditch you don't want to take your main mower into it, your big mower into it so you have a push mower now you might ask me should I buy a commercial 21 inch should I buy a commercial this no <laughs> uh, Go go to Walmart, get a Murray, get a Troy Bill. <laughs> I like I'm telling y'all like like those residential mowers. As long as you take care of them, put good gas in them, put fuel treatments in them, keep the carburetor clean, they'll last you. Cause you gotta remember you're not gonna be using those push mowers um, 
all the time. You're going to be using them in special situations. You should be uh, trying to, when you get to a yard and try to build your strategy on how to cut it, you should be figuring out how you cannot use your push more. You should be figuring out how can I cut this whole yard with my main mower and my trimmer. That's what I do. I used to, I when I first got my walk behind, you know, I, I used to love that walk behind because I love to clean cut it left. And I used to figure out ways. I used to cut all my front yards with that walk behind. And then I started realizing that probably like I'm like wasting a whole bunch of time because <laughs> I want to leave that clean cut and then I realized my gravely even though it's a zero turn it can leave the exact same clean cut I just have to learn how to cut with it and so that's what I did so now majority of my yard if I can cut the whole thing with my zero turn I do because I save time and if there's a little small area I might use my trimmer but if I if it's, it's a decent size small area I use my push more so it's that a little bit and that's why y'all saw I have that um, mower which I think I'm gonna uh, I think I'm gonna switch out but um, I don't really use my push more so I recommend get whatever push more you want and that's why I'm a big advocate of the time master the time master bro it uh it saves me time. At the time I bought my Time Master, I was overusing it. But I'm really seriously thinking about getting another Time Master, you know, possibly next year. Because it, I, I wouldn't use it as much. You know what I mean? It, it will be a specialized thing. The thing about the Time Master, it's only 30 inches. But I had no problem cutting a decent sized yard with it. You gotta think about like the yards that had a small gate, but they were it was a decent size, the backyards. You could run right through that with a top master. So yeah. Now, the main mower. I know you're gonna say Seth. No. No, you you can't cut, you know corners with the main mower and you're absolutely right <laughs> that's the only time you can't cut corners I will say uh, for those of you who don't know my main mower is uh, my gravely pro turn 52 monster that mower is a monster and my only thing about it is the fact that I don't have a proper commercial backup. When I go out with that gravely sharp blade, I run through yards like butter. Zoom, zoom, zoom. When something goes wrong with that gravely and I got to go back home and get my Troy built, one, I'm blessed to at least have a backup. Because at some one point in time, I didn't even have a backup. All I had was the Troy built. So that's all I knew. But when I go back and get that Troy built, I automatically have to like plan to... If I had like 10 yards to cut that day, might as well cut that down to 6. <laughs> you know? like I'm not going to be able to do all 10 of those yards. Uh, just because of the, the Troy built slower, it doesn't cut as clean. I might have to double cut to, to get the same cut. Um, it doesn't cut as high, you know. So, and I didn't realize that when I first had my Troy built because you got to understand that my Troy built was an upgrade. <laughs> I started with a 94 Murray, it was my first riding mower. And. I thought that 94 Murray was, you know, the ish <laughs> until I got my Troy built. And I was like, what? Like, I was like, this yard, it'll take me like 30 minutes to cut. I just cut it at 15. I just cut my time in half. Then I got my Gravely and I cut that time in half, you know? So 
your main mower is the only area where I feel like you can't cut corners. So, um, I have no idea if this video helped anybody. I have no idea if this video is weird because I'm not in my shed and I'm inside. But, if you didn't mind me being inside and this video was informational, or you agree with this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you like this video. And I will keep doing my tips and talks inside. And guess what? If you don't want me to do my tips and talks inside, I'm still probably going to do my tips and talks inside. <laughs> <laughs> It's just how it is, bro. Mm. Looks like I'm all out. Alright. Time to get a refill. Anywho. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. Stay tuned. Yes, sir.